Lake Diefenbaker opened up its arms to us once again for the Elbow Run 2016. On Saturday, July 9th, nine sailors assembled at the village of Elbow, Saskatchewan, and prepared eight Windrider sailboats for a week of camping and sailing. This was the fourth year for the event, and it is always a challenge to pack camping gear and enough food to be self-sufficient for a week. The Windrider 17 is a small trimaran sailboat that is, like its name suggests, 17 feet long and capable of carrying 800 pounds. It is well known and respected for its stability and speed, and it has attracted followers around the world. It's interesting when you get there, like, uh, I want to say the first year it was you and me, the second year it was you, me, and what, three, four other new faces, and this year it doubled up again, and we had eight boats out there. So seeing that happen on the first day, I think that was my favorite part. A sailor had never been on a sailboat until a few days before the elbow run actually uh, but the the story that was told in the previous two years was really compelling and intriguing uh, and I thought I need a hobby really glad I did it uh, especially for a novice sailor what better opportunity to have a crash course in sailing than going out for seven days Daryl said it was great to see eight wind riders on the lake together. Once we were on our way, we sailed in light winds for a couple of hours before selecting a beach for our first campsite. It was a real learning curve uh, uh, in, in a short period of time on, on uh, learning how to sail. I'd ridden with you a few times over the last 30 years and and it wasn't until actually getting a boat that you actually uh, uh, catch on to uh, what is necessary to uh, to uh, sail very safely so, and have fun doing it. Lake Diefenbaker is a 150 mile long stretch of the South Saskatchewan River. It was first dammed 50 years ago. The Saskatchewan River system is fed primarily by snowmelt in the Rocky Mountains. That snowmelt has been reduced for the past two years, and as a result, the lake level is much lower. The beach on which our tents were pitched was under three or four feet of water two years earlier. like to start our sailing days on the elbow run in a leisurely fashion. We take time to enjoy coffee and a full breakfast.
skies and light clouds are also welcome in the morning, along with enough wind to make a sailor smile. Let me introduce the members of our group. Brent on his 2001 model and who has many years of Windrider experience. Rob on his new boat who started the Elbow Run with only two hours of sailing experience. Yours truly, sailing the fifth sailboat in my lifetime. Ken, sailing in his second elbow run. Daryl, who started off the elbow run with me four years earlier. Murray, who launched his new boat for the first time the day we left. My brother Pat, who was sailing his new boat for the second time as we started the Elbow Run. Murray's brother Rick, who lives in Elbow and who sailed in the Elbow Run 2015. and my son Aquasi, who traveled from West Africa to join me on my boat. It brought together a really different mix of different people from different backgrounds with different ideas and different uh, like sailing experience, um, different stories, uh, different personalities that really made a really interesting like, mix. So lot you could see that many different people like well each of us were going through different things on the trip uh, you can see that um, you know having the, the two brothers well two sets of two brothers uh, was really an interesting dynamic After we passed Hitchcock's hideaway, we ran out of wind. It was time for a little fun, and we pulled all eight boats together into one very wide raft. This was a chance to see what Rob's solar electric setup could do. Rob has a large solar panel mounted on the bow of his boat, which charge two storage batteries, which in turn operate a trolling motor. He was able to move us forward but only after sucking up lots of reserve from his batteries. Our 120 foot wide raft soon attracted some attention and folks on a passing pontoon boat snapped some shots of us. The skies were getting darker and it was time to break up the rafting party and find a campsite for the night. With a forecast calling for a day of lightning, accompanied by heavy rainfall beginning by mid-morning, we decided to break camp before breakfast. As we headed out in very light wind, we were given a reminder that we were traveling in someone else's territory.
four families of coyotes, each in a different location around the lake, were sending messages back and forth between them. Their calls came clearly across the water, although we were not able to spot any of them. We wanted to be off the lake before the thunderstorm struck. We headed across to a sheltered location that we'd camped in the previous year. Once we were there, we pitched our tents and took time to enjoy our leisurely breakfast. down for two days what we knew was going to be serious thunderstorms and, and heavy rain thankfully we didn't go because who would have froze it was really uh it's it's the things that you don't really anticipate like there's there's extremes in in something that seems quite safe i mean As any sailor will tell you, the weather does not always cooperate when we want to go sailing. We learned from previous elbow runs that it was important to be prepared for bad weather. After our breakfast, with the sky looking more ominous, we pulled tarpaulins together into a temporary shelter to keep out the rain. I guess the favorite events, uh, other than sailing itself, would be sitting around the campfire and uh, just listening to stories and jokes. Our resident firemaker Rick and his brother Murray showed us their firemaking skills and kept us warm. Murray demonstrated his special fire blowing technique using hollow tent pole. There were moments of excitement at times when gusts of wind would catch our temporary shelter. <laughs> oh no, here it goes again. The break in the rain on the second day provided the opportunity for some engine repairs to Daryl's motor. Fortunately, some of our skilled sailors also have mechanical abilities. Have you ever wondered how many Windrider owners it takes to repair an outboard motor? Favorite stories I had is the MacGyver scene, essentially, with Brent. Does anyone have a ballpoint pen that we can take apart because we need a wire of, you know, so many thousands of an inch to clean out a carb jet? You know, that, that, that was a, a treat to experience. The old saying, red sky at night, sailor's delight, was welcomed on Tuesday evening. We were hopeful for some good winds the next day.
We were not disappointed, and we were all smiling as brisk winds got us on our way early in the morning. This is what we were looking for, and our wind riders showed off their abilities. Even though we were heavily loaded, we made some great time. Three members of our group had limited sailing experience, but they all handled the day like real pros. That was my first time in the sailboat. I sailed a wind rider like an hour and a half was my lesson from Rick about uh, a year before that. So when I when I actually got my Windrider, I was just, I was totally, really didn't know very much about it. And uh, just watching you guys sail and, uh, and everybody else sail, it, I picked it up really easy and uh, just totally enjoyed it. The boat uh, really performed well and stuff like that and uh, like I said, I can't, I might even be out there a week earlier. <laughs> a little scary at times. Uh, the day that we uh, went back to uh, find where Rob and uh, Ken had uh, disappeared to, uh, my folks decided to take a big nose dive into the lake, which kind of caught me off guard and made me uh, respect the wind and, and Mother Nature a little bit more than, than prior to that. so responsive and uh, it was just a real treat and it was great to feel confident in that boat you know um, and if I hadn't had seven days five hours a day 35 hours of concentrated sailing time early in the summer I wouldn't have had that probably for uh, several years After a great day of sailing, we set up camp on the inland side of a small island within sight of Prairie Lake Regional Park. A dramatic sunrise began day six as we prepared to retrace our steps. It was time to head home. Quasi and I had a unique encounter that day. It happened to be in the middle of the lake and there was something that seemed to be like a duck crossing. And I kept saying to my dad, look, you know, there's a duck. I think there's a duck. And I'm like, wait, that's not a duck. That's that, I think that's a moose. And of course he didn't believe me. 
Uh, and in the end, it actually turned out to be a deer. Amazing to watch and see how it could swim like so graciously across the, the lake in amongst all these uh, sailboats. Uh, that was a really special moment. I mean, I've never seen anything like that in my, in my life. This was the fourth elbow run, and each year has prompted us to contemplate its significance. What I remember the most or enjoyed the most was perhaps the balance or the contrast between that individual experience of sailing and the challenge that, that one goes through personally and, and the collective experience of learning and sharing that uh, sailing seven days with nine men. Um, so that sense of community uh, along with the beauty of the individual experience. We came out of the fog on day seven to meet the Riverhurst Ferry. It is a cable pulled ferry that crosses the lake in both directions once each hour and operates 24 hours a day. It is the only place on the 140 mile long lake where land vehicles can cross. Light winds and sometimes no winds started off the day. Following Brent's example, we resorted to paddling at times. Murray tried his luck and threw a hook in the water, but the fish weren't even biting. The wind did pick up for a while and we made it past Hitchcock's hideaway. In a week that had been filled with good times and good fortune, it was particularly fitting that we were blessed with a good omen on our return home. A bald eagle showed us a place on the beach to set up for our last campsite. firewood nearby. After we had eaten, Rick got a fire going and we sat around under a full moon, reminiscing about the week that we had just spent together. It was a fitting way to close out a wonderful time.
really enjoyed the new people out there. Once again, uh, Wind Rider owner, uh, owners, sailors, great people, diverse bunch. Uh, 2016 was another great year for sailing. We had a bigger crew this year. Excellent. Uh, again, no one argued. Everybody's in a really good mood. Um, it was nice to see more. Hopefully next year we can get some more people. Uh, we had lots of fun. Lots of fires on the beach. The camping. Uh, I don't know. It was just a great time. Uh, didn't know what to expect when I left home and, and uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed myself. For me, it was really, really magical and that there, I have a lot of really great memories and, and people were coming from like, not just coming from Saskatchewan, people are coming from, from Alberta and also Manitoba specifically for this. Um, I was really, really like happy and blessed to be a part of something like this. It was a fantastic benefit for me to get my feet wet no pun intended, um, learn how to sail the boat uh, with a good group of guys who uh, there wasn't any pretentiousness among the a lot of willingness to assist. Thoughts for the future? Um, little things for myself. Oh, maybe bring a spare air mattress. <laughs> Top my head, it was probably one of the most relaxing uh, uh, boat trips I've ever taken. Um, otherwise, uh, it, it's just something that just can't be beat. You know, it, it's a must. You know, if anybody likes boating, they got to go sailing on Deep Baker Lake at least once. You know. Again, just like last year, uh, fully challenged, um, lost in the beauty of it all lost in the camaraderie and the, and the collective spirit, uh, uh, those evening bonfires and those full moons and laughter and humor, exhaustion um, and enjoyment of doing something totally different from the day-to-day -day routines of our, of our own lives. So I thank you once again for an amazing adventure and experience. I look forward to next year. You heard the guys, they're already talking about next year. And as Rick says, we would like to have more Windriders and more Sailors out for the Elbow Run 2017. So if you think you might like to join us for next year's expedition, be sure to get in touch with me so your name is added to our mailing list. In the meantime, I wish you fair winds and smooth sailing, and thanks for watching. In case you don't know, Rick is not only our main fire starter, but he's also a great storyteller. Here he is with a little poem to end off the video. I have a neighbor, his name is Jim. I like to throw tomatoes at him. Soft and round, won't break the skin, but not my tomatoes, they're in a tin. <laughs>